Hello, welcome to Science Breakthroughs from Science Mission. I'm Sadashiva Pai and going to discuss couple of breakthrough papers published in the week of June 2nd. Let's start. First, we are going to discuss a paper published by Juan Pablo in Nature Medicine on the role of microRNA in depression. Why this paper is so important? Major depressive disorder, MDD, is a prevalent mood disorder affecting millions of people. This is the first study to report in humans a consistent microRNA dysregulation in postmortem brain tissue and blood samples from individuals with MDD. Changes in microRNA expression levels could predict drug treatment response and could be a useful biomarker. Authors analyzed microRNA expression in ventrolateral prefrontal cortex, that is PFC, of individuals with depression and identify my, microRNA 12O2 as the most dysregulated microRNA with the decreased expression in depressed brains as shown in this figure. These findings were validated by quantitative RT-PCR indicating decreased microRNA 12O2 in human MDD subjects. Authors found higher expression of microRNA 12O2 in human brain as compared to monkey brains and did not detect its expression in brains of other species. Authors also detected some expression of microRNA 12O2 in all tissues but expression was considerably enriched in the brain. These findings suggest a role for microRNA 12O2 in cognitive processes that are unique to primates, particularly humans. Gene targets of microRNA 12O2 were predicted using five microRNA target prediction databases. Five genes were upregulated in the PFC of subjects with depression. MicroRNA 12O2 levels correlated negatively with the expression of GRM4 but not with that of other predicted genes. GRM4 is expressed throughout the brain and is localized pre and post synaptically where it modulates glutaminergic, dopaminergic, GABAergic and serotonergic neurotransmission. In recent years, GRM4 has been implicated in the regulation of anxiety-related behaviors. Authors used HEK293 cells with no endogenous expression of microRNA 12O2 and relatively high levels of GRM4 to confirm the interaction. Decreased GRM levels after transfection of microRNA 12O2 in HEK29 cells. Treatment, treatment of GRM4 agonist IAP4 in neural progenitor cells reduced GRM4 expression whereas an antagonist MSOP treatment increased expression. Consistent with the hypothesis microRNA 12O2 expression was upregulated after IAP4 treatment and downregulated after MSOP treatment. These results suggest a bidirectional interaction between microRNA 12O2 and GRM4. No effect of acute 24-hour treatment with citalopram and imipramine on microRNA 12O2 or GRM4 expression in NPC cells, but an upregulation of microRNA 12O2 after chronic treatment with either drugs. Chronic treatment with either antidepressant reduced GRM4 mRNA expression. Authors found decreased microRNA 12O2 expression in blood samples of patients with the depression and was driven by the remitter group. Authors explored the regulation of microRNA 12O2 by treating the patients with the citalopram. The remitter group showed increased microRNA 12O2 levels after 8 weeks of treatment whereas no difference in microRNA 12O2 levels 
in non-responders or controls. Change in depression severity negatively correlated with change in microRNA 12O2 expression. These findings confirm a relationship between peripheral microRNA 12O2 expression and citalopram treatment response in patients with MDD. To conclude, this is a very important study and may help the patients with MDD. Next, let's look at another paper published by EFUQ in Cell. Here, authors identify signaling pathways in the development of fat. Why this paper is so important? About 1.4 billion people are affected by obesity globally. Imbalance between energy intake and expenditure causes obesity. Paper identify pathways that could be targeted to alter energy intake or expenditure. Human brown adipocytes are cold inducible and interspersed among white adipocytes in supraclavicular, paraaortic, and suprarenal regions. They share some molecular, histologic, and functional characteristics with cold inducible beige adipocytes found in subcutaneous white adipose tissue that is SC watt of mice. Authors use UCP1 that is uncoupling protein 1 staining of SC watt oxygen consumption in wild type controls and mouse knockout models to demonstrate the signaling pathways involved in the generation of subcutaneous watt. Authors investigated the role of type 2 immunity in biogenesis of cold induced beige fat first by quantifying the expression of thermogenic genes in SC watt of wild type and interleukin 4 13 knockout mouse housed at various temperature for 48 hours. Quantitative RT-PCR analysis revealed that prolonged exposure to environmental cold that is at 5 degrees Celsius induced the expression of the core set of thermogenic genes and reduced by 4 to 9 fold in SC watt of interleukin 411 knockout mice. Expression of UCP1 protein which is required for uncoupled respiration in brown and beige adipocytes were increased fourfold after cold exposure in SC watt of wild type but not in interleukin 413 knockout mice. Histological analysis further affirmed that cold induced remodeling of SC watt but not E watt. Oxygen consumption in SC watt and bat of cold exposed mice confirmed the type 2 cytokine signaling was preferentially required for browning of subcutaneous watt. Here the authors knocked out interleukin alpha and SAT6 and show that UCP protein levels were reduced and oxygen consumption was affected in these mice confirming the role of interleukin 4 R alpha and STAT6 in beach fat formation. Authors generated four get mice with GFP labeled eosinophils. GFP levels increased at 5 degrees centigrade and in the knockout mice that lack eosinophils GFP levels go down. Authors also show that UCP1 eosinophil staining of SC watt and oxygen consumption were also reduced in 4 get knockout mice indicating the requirement of eosinophils for fat generation. 
Authors so far have shown the activation of interleukin and eosinophils from cold. Next, authors show that monocytes which are macrophages recruited at 5 degrees Celsius cold and in CCR2 knockout mice recruitment of monocytes and increase in UCP1 oxygen consumption was prevented. Authors also show that macrophages express increase in alternate markers like arginase 1, CD301, interleukin 411, 413 alternatively activate macrophages. Authors also demonstrate using interleukin 4RA and interleukin 4RA list to create knockout models that myeloid activation is required for the generation of cold induced beach fat for formation. Authors further demonstrate an increase in tyrosine hydroxylase in myeloid cells and knockout of tyrosine hydroxylase in myeloid prevented increased in UCP1 and oxygen consumption. Authors thus have identified a pathway that activation of beach fat formation. Next authors wanted to investigate whether pharmacological activation by interleukin-4 was sufficient to increase the total thermogenic capacity in thermoneutral mice. Interleukin administration increased UDP1 and tyrosine hydroxylase in SEWAT and EWAT but not in bat and interleukin-4 knockout mice. These proteins did not increase. Similarly, oxygen consumption increased following interleukin-4 administration while mice exposed to increasing cold temperature but not in interleukin knockout mouse. Also, norepinephrine administration increased or oxygen consumption in the presence of interleukin-4 but not in interleukin-4 and UCP knockout mouse. The trend is reversed indicating their requirement. These findings demonstrate that interleukin-4 mediated an increase in beach fat mass significantly contribute to the thermogenic capacity of mice. Since administration of interleukin-4 selectively increased bead fat mass in thermoneutral mouse, authors investigated whether this newly recruited bead fat can ameliorate metabolic dysfunction in the setting of pre-established obesity. Thermoneutral mouse were fed with normal chow, that is NC, or high fat diet, that is HFD, for 10 weeks. Mice on HFT were treated with vehicle or interleukin-4 complexes over a period of 14 days. Treatment, treatment with interleukin-4 decreased total body mass and fat mass without significantly affecting lean body mass as shown in this figure. HFT feeding decreased expression of tyrosine hydroxylase and UCP proteins in the SCWAT and EWAT but not in BAT which were restored after interleukin-4 therapy. These findings were confirmed by histological examination of SCWAT and EWAT of treated animals. Authors investigated whether interleukin-4 induced increased in beach fat mass can restore insulin sensitivity in obese mice. Glucose and insulin tolerance tests demonstrated improvement in glucose disposal and insulin sensitivity respectively in interleukin-4 treated obese animals. This was further affirmed by proactive insulin signaling studies which revealed that interleukin-4 therapy improved insulin action as quantified by the phosphorylation of AKT in EWAT, liver and quadriceps. These results demonstrate that restoration of beach fat mass and activity can mitigate pre-established obesity and insulin resistance in mice. 
So this is an important study and may have profound implication in the treatment of obesity. Thank you for watching Science Breakthroughs from Science Mission.